So can you tell us more about the Gestalt approach that you've mentioned? You know, Gestalt focuses on awareness as a beginning point. What am I aware of? What am I feeling? What do I, what do I need right now? How do I fulfill that need? Like right now, I'm feeling I'd like that cup of water. My head might tell me, well, that's his, and it's going to interrupt this interview, so I really shouldn't ask for it. So now there's an incomplete gestalt, because I want the water. I'm feeling thirsty, and, and yet I'm, I'm stopping myself from having it. Now, if this went on for hours, that need would get stronger and stronger and become figural. Mm -hmm. And so it starts with awareness. And then how do I complete the gestalt? There may be all kinds of competing things. Like I might have a voice in my head that says, that's selfish, that's his, how can I take his water? Or um, I'm going to just grab the water. And then that might alienate. And if I don't have the awareness of the effect that that has on you, I might keep doing that in a hundred different ways mm -hmm. and, and not understanding why my relationship, people don't respond to me with much care or, or interest. The other thing is that um, we can have very divided and unintegrated selves. So a part that wants to do one thing and another part probably stemming from our parents' voices that we've now interjected, taken in, unexamined, will tell us that we can't have or we shouldn't do. So we split. And in, in part, Gestalt therapy attempts to integrate all parts so they're not so much at, at, at war. Not one dominating like what's called top dog and underdog fighting to get expressed. But to, to find some ways of, of in integrating and, and Instead of disowning, for example, what we think is forbidden, which might be um, some self-indulgent behavior or some healthy sexual behavior, we try to integrate that more so that we can bring more satisfying elements that complete the gestalts that meet our needs rather than avoiding them. And so in working with couples or individuals, it might be what I'm looking for in the group is what's being avoided here. Mm -hmm. What kind of contact does a person avoid? So you might see that they make very fleeting contact, so they never stick around long enough. I'm talking about in, in the group. Mm -hmm. um, or are they overwhelming? Are they clinging? Are they so dependent on others for time, attention, affirmation that they can't stand alone? And so helping them to to develop that side of themselves. I, I think life's real satisfaction, and this is more around Gestalt, is the nature of the contact we make with ourselves and, and with others is, mm -hmm. is really mm -hmm. what I think makes a difference. You know, it, mm -hmm. it, it's true how we think colors how we feel and how we behave, but I think the real richness in life doesn't come so much from the way we think but the nature of the contact we have with ourselves and, and mm -hmm. others in a, in a simplified nutshell yeah. form. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure to speak with you today, Arlie. And me with you. Many thanks. And the same. Thank you.